Welcome to part two of the Ogre Project, our deep dive into painting a Reaper Ogre. And this part is going to be all about glazes. First off, what is a glaze? Well, a glaze is a very thin, translucent layer of either paint or ink that's applied to the model to tint the underlying color that's currently on the model. Just add a little bit of color to whatever was previously applied. For example, what I'm doing right now, I'm taking some Vallejo model color Rose Brown and I'm applying it mostly to some of the highlight areas on the ogre. Uh, so I'm tinting the highlight areas a little bit pinker with our Rose Brown. Also concentrating a little bit more around the face because I want a bit of a slight human complexion to our ogre. So why bother with glazes? Well, there's a number of reasons why glazes are very important. In the case of what I'm doing right now is uh, wanting to add a little bit more of a flesh tone to our ogre. I couldn't do this in the highlight step because adding more of a pink flesh tone to uh, the upper highlight areas would be only turning those areas to a flesh tone. By waiting and applying it now with a glaze, I can evenly apply it to wherever I want. So put an even coat through the base coat and also through the highlights. Second reason is some colors just don't work well together when they're mixed. Uh, the most common example to give is yellow and blue. You can't mix them because you get green, but you can put down a base coat of yellow and then glaze blue over that if you wanted to transition between those two colors. Another place you can use a glaze is just for uh, simple fixing a color that you weren't happy with. If you, for example, painted a, let's say, a cloak red, and in the end it turns out you really don't like that red cloak, well, you can apply a couple coats, a couple glazes of purple ink, let's say, and you'll give that red cloak a little bit of a purple sheen, and maybe that will help to uh, prevent you from wanting to you know, strip the whole thing and starting again. Now, here is the important thing about glazing. If you think that this looks pretty much just like what we did in part one with layering, well, you're almost correct. The layering method that I use on all my projects is pretty much almost the exact same thing as glazing. The only difference is the purpose and how thin the paint is. And even not necessarily sometimes how thin the paint is, but just the purpose, the reason for the application. So if you know how to thin your paints really well and get some nice smooth blends with your layering, well, pretty much you already know glazing. I'm gonna finish up here and I'll see you back around the four minute mark. For our second glaze, going with flat brown and doing this for one of the other reasons I mentioned applying a glaze is to fix things. I decided that my shades weren't quite up to snuff on this model. I needed a, a bit more darker tone in the recesses. And since I'm doing that, I might as well add a little bit of color as well. So that's why I'm using flat brown has a little hint of red in it, which will work well with the rose brown that we used on the highlights. Now I'm not using this just on the deep recess areas of the model. I'm dragging it out, bringing it into the uh, some of the base coat areas, uh, mostly on the secondary shade areas, uh, just dragging that color out wherever I think 
Uh, it needs to be basically redefining, uh, fixing any errors about where we put the highlights and the shades. And while we're doing all of this, uh, adding a little bit of color as well. So like here you can see I put it in the recess and then I kind of drag it out along his thigh because I decide I want a little bit more shade there. Uh, this is a quick process because the paint is so thin. Uh, I'm not giving you a paint to water ratio for glazes because there's really even more factors than uh, with layering, it's difficult to give a ratio uh, because it depends on, well, just like with layering, what color the glaze is and what uh, color it's going over. Uh, you can have a glaze that's literally a 1 to 10 paint to water ratio. Uh, I will tell you with darker glazes, uh, you generally want to go for a thinner concoction because, uh, especially if it's going over a light surface, because obviously a darker color is going to tint a lighter surface faster than the reverse. You may notice that my brush stroke here is not very precise and it looks really bad when the video is sped up like this. Uh, I'm not too concerned right now because uh, I can do this a little bit sloppy because the paint is so thin with our glaze here. It's basically just colored water. It takes a, a quite a few layers to actually build up before you can see a transition. So uh, one wayward a brush stroke you literally won't even notice it takes a few to build up and those will eventually get concentrated into the areas where I want to start establishing colors you know some areas where I just want a ever so slight change maybe get one or two glazes and as we work our way in the deeper recess recesses that might get three or four it all depends on what we're painting so I'm gonna to continue to glaze my flat brown. Continue watching if you like, otherwise you could jump forward to the nine minute mark. It's kind of rare that I would put a glaze over an entire flesh area like uh, I've been doing on this ogre here. More likely, I use it in small portions. For example, here I'm using uh, red and royal purple in different ratios mixed to add a, a little bit of warmth to the ear and the nose and a little bit around the other areas of the face of this ogre. So this is uh, one of the things that's kind of a glaze but it's also sort of layering. I'm going with glaze, again, using the same definition, is that the goal here is to add a little bit of color to what we've already applied and not just completely cover it up.
For our final glaze, using a mix of charred brown and royal purple. Charred brown for a bit more shade and royal purple for a bit more color. And this is going mainly in the deepest recesses. The flat brown glaze that we applied uh, darkened the uh, base coat and near base coat area somewhat, but it also lightened up our deepest recesses. So we need to go back in, redefine those a little bit, and heck, while we're doing it, might as well add a little bit of color with the royal purple added as well. And as you can see, we've added a bit of warmth to our ogre throughout this entire glazing process. We added uh, pink for the highlights, we added our uh, flat brown for the base coat, uh, first shade layer areas, and now we're adding a little bit purple, which is uh, also again another warm color and makes for a really good shade for red. So this has been, entire thing here has been thematic about adding warmth to the flesh of our ogre. So as you can see, glazing is very similar in application to layering. Uh, it's just the reasons why you do it is usually different. Uh, you just, it's mainly for just tinting a certain area rather than bringing it up to a completely different color through multiple, multiple applications. Uh, but it's a, a very handy technique. As you can see, we've added a lot of warmth to our ogre and at uh, home on your own miniatures, just adding a little bit of glaze here and there really can liven up a miniature. Just adding uh, a little bit of warmth to the nose and the cheeks through a, a very light red glaze on uh, like a human complexion really just makes the miniature pop. And just that little subtle thing that'll take you a few seconds can really elevate your paint job. So that's the end to glazing, but we are not done with the ogre project just yet. We got a lot more to go over still, so I will see you next time. Bye bye. The Puma Man. Does that sound right? The Puma Man. I think that's what I mean to say. The Puma Man. Now it just sounds funny.